Next up is James Rabbingleaf, Sr. James is a member of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe. He's worked with the North Central Climate Adaptation Science Center since 2018 and has been a connector and partnership builder throughout that time. James has worked with numerous federal agencies, state agencies, and tribal nations, and has worked to help tribal nations address climate change. James, go ahead. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Stefan, and good afternoon, uh, all, one and all. Again, uh, it's good to be with you today. And um, before I jump into my slides, I wanna just again also echo um, your, your comments about Mark Junker and his leadership. Mark, we thank you again for your organization and I know um, you're helping us uh, connect with those tribes on, on the southern part of our, our, our CASC uh, region is important. So I just wanna acknowledge you again today. You know, as I present this, uh, this, this talk with you today, I also acknowledge uh, several members of my uh, tribe um, also here's on with us, uh, uh, Mr. Phil Tuigel and Ms. Paula Antone. They're also members of the Climate Change Working Group. So as we get into the question and answer, um, I'll welcome them to, to comment and, and give their thoughts as well. Um, again, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the Rubens Sioux Tribe Climate Adaptation Project. So it's ongoing. Uh, it's about a year into the project. And so, Stefan, if you can next slide. And so I, um, I always begin by sort of reminding people again the, the, that we do have uh, a tribal government and tribal governments are in place. It's, a, it's an example of self-determination and, and tribal sovereignty. And so to start this work, um, it, it began in 2019 with this uh, letter to the president um, of the tribe, Rosewood Sioux Tribe at the time was Rodney Bordeaux, and they established something called the uh, Suchungu Climate Crises Working Group. And I was asked to be a part of that working group as a member of the NC CASC. And, and it was an honor to be a part of that, to work with this team, uh, to really put together, uh, with Stefan's help as well, and leadership, uh, BIA Climate Resilience uh, Planning Grant. And so the, the, this was an effort to get an official decision by the tribe to go forward. And the next slide, Stefan. And also, again, an official record of decision is a tribal resolution. So you see a resolution here. And um, as we were putting together the, the grant as well as this working group, and what is the working group going to do? And what are we going to focus on? And what's what's first? And so, you know, when you look at this resolution, there's a lot of information in here. And it kind of tells you again the significance of our tribe, where we come from, kind of the authorities that really guide our work, guide who we are. But also it begins to lay out what we want to do um, with, with climate change and really the tribe's first uh, major effort as a tribe to address climate change. And so I sort of wanted to highlight that we wanted to do a plan, a uh, climate adaptation plan. Uh, we wanted to really take a look at impacts on our reservation and surrounding lands. Uh, we wanted to really look at uh, how do we, what, what are the actions that we need to take as a tribe? And again, uh, you know, we need to talk, uh, talk to this climate change issue among, among our community members. And so we had to do and think about a communication strategy. And finally, you know, we were a little bold in this effort to think about developing a, a climate center um, on the tribe, with the tribe, in terms of focusing really on the specific needs of the tribe, but also how do we address those issues that really are needed in terms of a capacity development approach, meaning uh, workforce, meaning data, meaning our infrastructure, meaning our staffing and our expertise. So those are the things that we started out with in terms of this work. Next slide. So, you know, if you know Rosebud, again, we're in South Central South Dakota and I like to use maps as well. But it just gives you an idea of that our, our tribal lands today are in five counties. And so this is in South Central South Dakota. So this was where we started from in terms of looking at what areas we want to focus on. And so, um, so Todd County there is really where the most tribal land is today. I think Millette County is second in terms of uh, percentage of, of tribal land, trust land. And then it goes to Tripp and Gregory uh, County as well. Next slide. So here again, here's a graphic of kind of what we wanted to do with the climate adaptation plan. Uh, that's a graphic uh, that we produce with our, our consultant partners. Uh, NC CASC is, is a partner in this because of my role and, and also Stefan's. But again, uh, we wanted to look at some existing work that already happened. So we did a drought, uh, drought vulnerability assessment um, several years ago as well. Uh, that was done with some NOAA, NOAA NIDAS money and also BIA money. We wanted to really look at the role of data. Uh, the importance of data in this work. And so 
we wanted to see what we're, where were we at as a tribe in terms of our data uh, capabilities, our data resources, and then also the role of education. You know, we, we never wanted to go too far ahead of the tribe in terms of uh, these ideas, these processes. So we are educated and, and bring people along as we went. And development, and there's another key word. Uh, we know that um, in terms of this plan, we wanted to identify um, important aspects of opportunities. So what's going to happen in a changing climate? You know, how can the tribe prepare for that and develop um, uh, new ideas? Uh, this plan also involved 20 communities. So Rosebud Sioux Tribe is composed of 20 communities in those five counties I mentioned. And so each one of those communities uh, we focused on, uh, we developed a survey. Uh, I won't share the results at this point because they're not been approved by our leadership, but, but we really did a, a strong effort to do a survey and to document uh, tribal members' interests, uh, ideas of how we, and an understanding of climate change. Santa the Glacier University is one of the tribal colleges in our region as well. Um, they've had an effort to be a part of this. Partnerships and collaboration. Again, I, um, I want to applaud NC Caskin and his leadership for supporting my work and Stefan's work in this work. Uh, we need that. We also worked with consultants to help us with the plan. And so the, each one of those partners bring a unique aspect of skill and talent to address the issues on Rosebud. And I think finally, I think I want to highlight again the importance of traditional knowledge or traditional ecological knowledge in this work. Uh, we do have um, uh, deep and strong knowledge holders on Rosebud yet today. Lakota uh, ceremonial people, uh, custom people, uh, educators and historians. And so we still have those people today who are part of this work and we rely on them uh, for their knowledge and their expertise and their wisdom. So we, we have a series of interviews uh, storytelling with the elders as well, part of this project, and we will document those stories uh, as part of the plan, and also the importance of really bringing together traditional knowledge and Western science. Next slide. So, so you know, our approach really was to identify again and advocate for tools and, and resources um, of climate change. Um, you know, there's been a lot of effort and discussion talk these past few years about climate change, so we wanted to really understand what's happening at, the, at a larger scale but also really understand what happens for us here in terms of adaptation. Again, I mentioned the key point again is we wanted to bring our knowledge uh, just as valid as Western science into this work. Again, we, we think that this work is gonna be uh, stronger in terms of NC CASC going forward as tribes begin to understand the role of NC CASC in their work and this, in this particular work, but also how does that get stronger? How does that get better? And even among the tribes, um, tri inter-tribal cooperation and um, support. We wanted to make sure that happened. And, and then our last bullet is this co-development idea, again, of capacity building, training, and things that would advance understanding. Um, you know, one day you know, we'll have a tribal climate toolbox. So we'll have those sort of aspects where we have uh, our climate resource managers being a part of those, those things like RAD, like the climate toolbox and things that we talk about uh, at the highest level here at NC CASC. Uh, next slide. So again, we're looking at monitoring, evaluation, learning, and innovation. We try to figure out through this, off, through this process again, what do we do given our unique situation as a tribal government, uh, still you know, with a, a strong vision to sustain ourselves, to build resilience. And so you know, we're looking at monitoring systems. You know, how do we develop systems that reflect our needs? We wanna understand how well those work. Again, we're, we're promoting lifelong learning in terms of climate. So we wanna create opportunities for our communities to learn. And finally, we wanna innovate. You know, what are the things that we can do as a tribe in our unique status as, um, as governments to, you know, to address climate change? And then we wanna do that by learning and lower regrets uh, actions, reduce the risk and promote adaptation. Next slide. Uh, again, here's an example again of, of how we're bringing different information into our adaptation planning. This is a story uh, uh, written, drafted uh, by Victor Deville, who's our tribal historian. But again, it talks about, again, our, our history, our culture, and how we look at water and climate. And so this story and other stories will be um, part of our plan, part of our information gathering, and how we talk about climate uh, in a strong cultural Lakota context. Uh, next slide. Again, here's another example of Victor's work. Again, he's talking about winter counts and looking at winter counts and bringing together uh, those events, weather, climate together um, with uh, Western approach of sciences. And so um, again, this is things that we're doing, have been done, 
and we want to build upon that. So Victor is one of our key uh, cultural people who's helping us with this plan. Next slide. So uh, again, bring in the Wool Lakota project. This is on the Rosewood Sioux Tribe. Again, this is really generating a lot of interest nationwide, international wide, and how how we bring back the buffalo to um, to Lakota lands in a Lakota way. Um, well, again, Wool Lakota is a high level concept about uh, relationships, um, uh, highest level in terms of um, aspirational, but also very practical. Again, what role does a buffalo have in restoring our ecosystems on our lands? Um, how does that work with our culture and our customs and strengthening our knowledge to the land? And what else can we do? And so one of the things that I would think that we'd love to work on this coming year is to really identify those tribes within our region who, who have a great interest in looking at Buffalo and climate change and climate adaptation. What, what can we do to really bring those tribes together and to support the resource managers in Buffalo restoration? So I'm looking forward to a conversation uh, and just stay it today that we wanna do something like that here um, through NC Cask and partners and with the Rosewood Sioux Tribe going forward. Next slide. Again, I, um, I am part of this work as well. It's the, sort of the restoration, rebuilding, the strengthening of the Ocheti Shankoni, the seven council fires. Again, this is a pretty cool um, logic model that was produced uh, by the leadership of Ocheti, 17 tribes plus who are part of the original confederation of Lakota and Lakota Dakota peoples. But again, it gives you a, an understanding of how tribes are thinking and how they're really trying to rebuild and understand not only what happened to us, but also how do we go forward? How do you do that in a, in, a, in a way that reflects our values and our needs, creating a vision, a mission uh, to really bring people together. And so I share this with you again as an example again of what's happening in Indian country and how tribes are looking in not only just climate change, but also all aspects. And so we know that climate change will affect these things. And so we have to figure out again, what role we play in that and what, what role NC Cast can play uh, in rebuilding Ocheti Shank going. That's a pretty cool tagline. A North, North Central Climate Adaptation supporting the reestablishment of the Ocheti Shankoli. Uh, next slide. So I want to thank you with that. That was a pretty um, quick overview of the work that we're doing. Um, it's moving forward. I think we're about um, we're about a few months out before we get a first draft of a plan. And um, and I think um, Stefan, I'm going to wait till question and answer to invite Phil or uh, Paula to give some remarks as well on the plan. So so I'll stop there if that's okay. Yeah, thank you so much, James. 